Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the powerful mirror principle. And we're going to see what it is, how it works, and what you can do to use those simple principles to change your reality, to make sure that your life, what you witness, what you're experiencing, what you are creating in your life changes for good by simply going to the source, the true cause of your experiences in your life. The mirror principle is extremely simple. When you truly understand it, when you truly break it down like we are about to do, it is a game changer and it's going to completely change and transform your perception of reality and how you interact with reality. And it is so profound because it really forces you to look between for all the answers. Because the mirror principle is this. What you see outside of you is nothing more than a reflection of what is going on inside of you. And so if this little drawing here is you, and if this big long red line is the mirror, what the mirror is reflecting back to you is simply what you are projecting on it. And this is what Carl Jung referred to when he said that life is nothing more than perception is projection. So your perception of reality is nothing more than your projection. And this is something that has been taught for a long time, way back into the Hermetica, when he was saying that as between, so bizarre, as above, so below. The term mirror principle in particular is something that has been often used by the book Reality Transurfing. But if you look at Neville Goddard, or if you look at the teaching of Dr. Joe Dispenza or Bob Proctor or anybody in that space, they will all tell you the same thing. It is your state of consciousness that creates your reality. And that is why life is nothing more than a mirror reflecting back to you the content of your consciousness. And this is why it gets very tricky for us because our relationship with this mirror is often unconscious. We are not aware that the mirror is nothing more than a projection of our state of consciousness. And so what we do is that we focus a lot of our attention on the mirror and we're trying to change the mirror. We're trying to change the people. We're trying to change what we see. We're trying to change and control what the mirror is reflecting back to us instead of going to the cause and looking at our mind at looking at our belief, at looking at our emotion, at looking at what is it that I am projecting to the mirror and that is creating this in my life again and again and again. Because this here is the true cause of your experiences. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. One of the most amazing examples in where you can see in your life this the fastest is this. A couple of years ago, I had a client who was complaining to me about how people had changed, right? The mirror, the people, they don't smile anymore. They're always busy. They're not as friendly. They're not as warm. They're just different. The world has changed. And he was complaining about how much the world was different and people were treating him differently, no longer smiling on the street. And so I told him, when you go down the street, do you smile at people, right? So what are you projecting? onto the mirror. And he said, why would I smile? I mean, nobody cares, so why would I do such an effort? Why would I be the one who changed, right? So he was being, being the victim of the mirror, right? And he was that in his mirror, changing the way he thinks and his perception of the world. And that's what a lot of us do. And that's why we remain unconscious. And that's why we remain trapped in perpetuating the mirror and what we see. So when I told him, do that little experiment for me, go for a week and just smile randomly at people. Don't expect anything. Don't expect anything to smile at you. Just go and smile and tell me what happens. And he texted me a few days later. I was like, holy shit, people are smiling. I get it. See, when he started to change his perception here, instead of being like, you know, no longer smiling, no longer happy, and he put a smile on his face, what happened is that the mirror started smiling back at him. And you could say that that's a small win, it's insignificant, it doesn't matter. But once you understand the principle, once you have that click and you see how fast the mirror can change and adapt your new state of consciousness, 
it can be done for about anything in your life. In my life, I used to struggle with the belief that I'm too tall, I'm too shy, I'm not attractive, and everybody who was you know, seeing me, because you know, I'm, I'm 1 meter 96, if you're, if you're wondering. So when people were telling me, oh, you're so tall, why are you so tall? And I used to get that a lot, right? So that was the mirror. What was being triggered in my mind here was anxiety, was feeling shameful, was feeling like, you know, uncomfortable, insecure, wondering what to say next, trying to hide and shrink, creating all those things. But this is what I was projecting on the mirror. And that's why I was attracting people here and situation that were just reaffirming my own insecurity in my state of consciousness. And when I started to change that, how did I do that? I went into changing the way I was seeing myself, my self-image, not how people see me, but my own self-image. And when everybody was telling me, why are you so tall? Or why are you so tall? I would say, thank you. And over time, what I changed is that it completely changed my mindset, my self-image, and the reflection started to change. So people are still saying it, but today I feel like they're nicer. It's easier to you know, have an icebreaker to start a conversation with them because I no longer feel that old fear. Why? Not because the mirror has changed, but because I changed. And I see that happening with my clients all the time, whether it's relationship, whether it's money, whether it's health, whether it's doing things they thought they could never ever do in their life. It is nothing more. When people tell you I could never ever ever do something in my life, it's because here they are trapped in a damn fucking box. And so what life is then projecting back to them is more evidence of why they can't and should never do it. So then people do one of the biggest mistake is that they let the mirror control the way they think, right? It's the mirror that creates the thoughts, that creates the feeling, that creates the decisions, that creates and reinforces the pattern and that just perpetuate the same level of mind. And so what you have is a never ending loop where people struggle to grow or struggle to change what is happening in their reality because what they see here in the 3D, right? Some people call the mirror the 3D. What they see in the 3D controls the way they think and that is the biggest mistake you can do because if you think according on what you see, the current tangible result, it is only going to reinforce the state of mind that created the result. So as Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. So you cannot perpetuate that mindset and the same thought and the same belief and expect the mirror to change. So people think according to what they see, experience in their reality. And then they wait, they wait, they wait, they wait for what? For the mirror to change for the president to change, for the economy to change, for the boss to change, for the next girlfriend or boyfriend, or for something miraculous to come and save and rescue them so that then ah, I can be happy. Or when I get my manifestation, then, then it'd be okay. Then I'm gonna be happy. Then everything's gonna be sorted. But you see, if you truly understand this mirror principle, you have to take responsibility for what you see. And this can be very difficult because when the mirror is bad and hard and tough and, and abusive on you or any form of things like that, you can be like, how can I take responsibility for this? I didn't create that. I didn't create those people who abuse me or you know, hurt me or all those world situations around me that are unfair. But what you can do where you are right now is to choose that I'm not gonna let my past, I'm not gonna let that mirror and that projection continue to create experiences that I don't want to perpetuate in my future. So at some point you got to decide if I'm going to stick to that old mindset and this, all the identification that I created based on my past and all the projections I saw on the mirror, or I'm going to 
clean out, you know, like turn off the TV and start again and put a new movie into the player, so to speak, or just you know, go onto a different channel and start to experience a different reality. Everything is possible, but you gotta change. The person here, the energy of that person here has to change. You cannot be the same old person and create a different reality. So then the question is, how do we do it? How do I use the mirror principle? How do I use what Carl Jung would call perception of his projection to change my reality? Well, the good thing is that it's not that hard because if you look at any of the videos on my channel, all of them will show you how to do it. It always comes back to the same thing. We look at it from different angle, from different techniques, different tools, different ways you could do it, but it all comes down to the same thing. First, you have to become aware what is the mirror reflecting back to me? Yeah? And if you look at Carl Jung's perception is projection model, he will call this the blind spot or the shadow. Yeah? What is the shadow in your consciousness that you don't see? All that unconsciousness, meaning the belief, the repressed negative emotion, the past experiences that are holding you back, or certain part of you that you don't accept or that you feel ashamed of, those are what are the shadow and those shadow those part of us that are extremely unconscious meaning we're not aware even our belief or our self-concept or our you know all our belief system we also project them onto the mirror and this is why when we experience things that we feel like we didn't create or we don't like or we don't understand why it keeps happening it often comes from unconscious aspect of ourselves meaning belief system that we haven't looked at aspect of our self-image that we're not aware of or any past experiences that are still affecting our field. So life never lies. Life is fair. Life only reflects back to you the content of your consciousness. Okay? But also all of us collectively are also creating a collective consciousness. All of us affect this field together. All of us experience the mirror together on big events in the world. And so the collective consciousness of the world is also being reflected back to us, right? So we also have to consider that as well. But you are a powerful creator because in any situation you, could choose, you, could, you can choose to change. You can choose to no longer react to the mirror, but to start looking inside. What is the thought? What is the belief? What is it that I believe about this situation that is perpetuating this situation? The example that I gave you earlier you know, about my own belief that I'm too tall, that it's strange, that it's not good, that people won't like me. Those were my beliefs that were being projected. And so I was feeling insecure when things were happening in the mirror because of my belief system. So I had to own it, meaning becoming aware of it and change it. I did the same with money. You know, when I had situation in my life where I was just getting by, where no matter what I was doing, no matter how many hours I was working, I was just getting by. That's it. Every single month, just getting by. And so I was blaming the mirror. I was blaming my clients. I was blaming lack of clients. I was blaming all the things until one day I realized and I asked myself this powerful question. How do I keep on creating this? And so I had to own my relationship with money. I had to own my belief of unworthiness and I don't deserve it and I need to work hard and all these things need to happen before I deserve making money. So I had to own my own relationship around money and my self-image, creating a self-image here that will reflect something different on the mirror. So as I started seeing myself as being worthy of making money, being worthy of helping others, being worthy of charging the amount of money that I thought I was deserving and having clients who love working with me or love paying me, who appreciate me, right? I started to slowly and surely get those clients, get those things, have more money at the end of the month, have my situation completely change. But you see those examples only re-emphasize that you must work on yourself first. You must be the change you want to see in the world. So it's common sense, but it's not always easy in practice. Why? Because of our blind spot, all that unconsciousness 
And that's why sometimes it's so much easier to work with someone like when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching because it's so much easier for somebody who has experience to show you or to use self-awareness to show you your blind spot so that you can start working on them and fast track your progress. Okay. Now, another pitfall here is that when people start to change the state of consciousness, meaning I'm going to start thinking greater, I'm going to start using affirmation and visualizing what I want, and I'm going to stop letting that 3D and that mirror bother me. And they do it for a few days, they do it for a week, they do that gratitude, right? They use all the tools, but then they don't see the result here in the mirror. And the whole thing is still happening or they're not manifesting what they want or they're getting a little bit of something but it's not exactly what they want and then what happens is they get disappointed it doesn't work I tried it's not working for me it's working for everybody else what the fuck is my manifestation why is it not working so now the state of mind is back into the main trap I told you all, is that the mirror is creating the way they think I don't see it Therefore, it doesn't work. And so they go into the paradigm of seeing is believing. Instead of going into the real cause, believing is seeing. So you have to be very good at being able to ignore what you see here because there's a time lapse, okay? In the 3D reality, things take time. There's a law of nature. Things take time for it to change. The moment you start to change your thoughts now, it doesn't happen in five seconds. Sometimes it can be extremely fast. Sometimes it takes longer, but it also depends on so many things. Because if you have 40 years or 10 years or one month or however long you have that momentum of projecting all those beliefs, you have to understand that it may take time for the buffer to change and for your reality to start reflecting different things. So often in my experience, is that you start to see little wins, little wins, little wins, and then boom, big things happen. But the better you get at this, and the more evidence you start to see, just like the story I told you earlier about the smile, right? The more you create a belief here in your mind, damn, this work. It's not just conceptual, it's also the experience, right? I've experienced it, I know it works. I've changed, and I've seen here things change. So evidence will start to reaffirm the new belief system and that will start to continue that momentum and that spiral into a new and better and better and better spiral. So then how do you get started on this? Notice what the mirror is showing you. Take responsibility. Ask yourself how am I creating this? What are the thoughts? What are the stories? Where am I being a victim? What am I avoiding? What are the thoughts and negative feelings that I experience over and over and over again? Who am I blaming, attacking, judging here? That I must change in my state of mind. For me to live the life that I want in my 3D, who do I need to be? How would I think? How would I feel? How would I experience reality differently? How would I see myself differently? If I was a rich and abundant person now, how would I go and do grocery shopping differently. If I was a confident, fit, healthy individual now, with amazing friends and relationship, how would I walk down the street? How would I look at people differently? How would I greet people differently? See, going like Neville Goddard said, going to the end result and seeing yourself being that person can give you clues on the different mindset, the past mindset versus the mindset and the state of mind that you need to have now to have life reflect what you want. If you need more breakdown content on how a specific technique, go on the channel. There are many, many, many videos that can help you in so many different contexts, money and relationship and self-image and self-worth. So go have a look. There's also a 30-day program that you can use in which I teach every single day one lesson and one tool that can help you apply those principles into your life, become aware of your blind spot and start making changes into your reality. You can also book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me if you want to fast track your progress and if you want to melt down 
those old beliefs and self-projection that are preventing you from creating the reality that you want? Let me know what you think down in the comment. If this video was helpful, if you enjoyed it, if you have anything you want to share, write it down in the comment. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys, if you want to see more videos. And thank you for watching and helping me grow this channel. I will see you next time. Be well.